develop a semantic web application based on two data sets. Uh, we'll develop the ontology, we'll develop an all file, and uh, we'll see how it gets done. So I'm actually taking uh, two data sets. One is an uh, NYC open uh, data set that is uh, all usage data sets for New York City, and the other one is an energy benchmark for a uh, particular building for, uh, in New York. So I got these two data sets from the site uh, nycopendata.com and you can actually go through this site. There are lots of uh, data sets that are available which can be modeled uh, with semantic web applications. So let me first pull up the two data sets and show you how these data sets look like. So this is the first one that is an oil boilers, detailed fuel consumption and building data set for New York City. So you can see that there are a couple of uh, data fields out there like the borrow blocking lot facility address, natural gas, and there are a lot more uh, other uh, fields that we can find there. And uh, I'll actually show you the other one too. The other one is the uh, NYC Municipal Building Energy Benchmark Results. And this also contains borrow block and board build, the building agency, a, a building agency, and uh, some of the other attributes too. So what I have did is that I've actually taken all of the attributes from the uh, Excel file and then uh, put it in an uh, class and uh, categorize that into classes, attributes, like data type attributes and object attributes. And uh, these are the object, uh, so these are the these are the classes that have actually, uh, these are the data that we have in that. So we have a borrow block and lot, this is the address, natural gas utility, building manager, owner, owner address, boiler application, deadline, ball model. And these are the other ones that we have for them. And this is a municipal energy, uh, building data so these are the data uh, attributes that we have so i have modeled them something like this so we have a classes and subclasses so we have an owner address and a faculty facility address so these come under a uh, super class called an address and we have an owner and a building manager so these two come under a uh, super class called a person and i've developed and i've put in a building class a boiler class a borrow block and lot a municipal building a municipal building address which is equivalent to a facility address, and then a municipal borrow block and lot. And these are my object properties. So we, I have an object property saying, saying has, contains, belongs. And contains and belongs are the inverse properties that I've actually used. And uh, next coming to the data type properties. So address has a data type property called as city name, latitude, longitude, state application, street name, and zip code. And boiler has a application capacity, installation date, model, and number of identical boilers. So likewise, I've actually listed out each of the data type properties for each of the classes that we can actually associate with each other. So I'll actually show you the Prodigy, which is a tool to actually create an uh, OWL ontology. So this is Prodigy the font file that I'm using for the project. And I've actually created an OWL class here. So you can actually just right click on this and then say create a subclass which actually creates a subclass of all these types. So I do an address class which has a facility address and the owner address. As I've told you, the municipal address is equivalent to the facility address. And borrow block and lot is equivalent to the municipal borrow block and lot class. So these are the different classes that I have. And the person class which has a building manager and the owner. And these are the properties that I have. So I have an object property which belongs to, so a building belongs to a borrow block and lot and uh, contains like a municipal borrow block and lot or municipal or borrow block and lot will contain a municipal building and a building and has. So a building has a uh, municipal address or a municipal building has an um, address or a building manager likewise. And these are the data type properties that I actually have for them. And these are the individuals. So individuals are like the instance data that we provide for each of the classes. So we provide instance data for each one of them. So address has specific address. So I have nine instances for facilities. Likewise, I have nine instances for owners and boilers, borrow block and lot building. And likewise, for all the other ones, I actually have nine of the instances for each one of them. Next, I actually write in Java file to actually pull up data from the product, the old file that we have written. So I'll just go through the uh, file, the uh, Java file that I've written and uh, the queries that I've written for this. So one of the one of the major things is that we just need to set the default namespace. So the default namespace comes from the product itself. So this is the default namespace that we have. So HTTP, all this comes to a default namespace, which can be got from clicking one of this. And this is the default namespace that we have for 
to your application. And then once you get that, you need to have a model which actually gets into that, and then you create a instance of class in final product and then get the data from an instance file. So to get data from an instance file, first we need to load, create an ontology model, and then we need to put in an old file. So this is my old file that I've put in the project. So this is an old file, and then uh, once you create the prodigy and then export it as an RDF or RDF slash XML or RDF dot out, to actually get that out. And then once you get that out, you can actually put in as a prod dot out, and then you get all the data in it. And then once you get get the data in it, you read the data, and then you close the uh, input stream, and then you can actually do a try class proc here to actually uh, catch if there is a file I/O exception that you can handle. It. And then once this is done, we can actually run some of the queries that we have. So my queries are like print maximum oil consumption and uh, print the number of restaurants, so and actually show you the output of each one of them that I have. So. So this is the final file which actually has all the results and the queries of the data that I have right now. So first one is like when the maximum oil consumption. So we have uh, different cities in our uh, uh, oil usage data and then we have a building for each city. So this is the total oil consumption for uh, each city based on the based on it. And the next one is the print the number of questions, it's oil border age, and the other one is the time and so once we get this data, it's like uh, we have the number of residents in it. So once the age is done, and then we have the retirement date, we can actually see how many uh, how many residents would be affected if the boiler hasn't been changed, or uh, what's the age range of for each boiler uh, that a uh, resident unit has been using. So the, that's the data we can actually input from uh, this one. And the uh, next query is. Uh, print the boiler at high and low consumption for each building. So based on this oil consumption, we can actually predict how much of oil is needed for each building in New York City. So these are the boil models that we have right here. Uh, and then this is oil consumption, high and oil consumption, low for each of the boiler models that we have. So this gives data gives you like uh, how much of oil has been consumed by each model of the uh, boiler right here. And then we have uh, we can actually, then this is one that's like the energy benchmark for each uh, building in the each city. So these are the different uh, building names that we have. This is an agency that's owned by the building, and then it's the city that uh, the building resides in, and the energy benchmark for it. So we can actually see that all this data has been uh, pretty much put in. So you can actually see that the Bronx has an energy benchmark of 8.3, and then you see that Bronx are coming so based on that, you can raise some information out and uh, get some useful data from it. And the last is like the building owner and the manager for uh, each of the buildings that have been uh, uh, that have been in the New York City. So this is what the application uh, uh, prints out for the final thing. So this is the queries that I've written for it. So these are the result sets that I have, and these are the uh, Results that I get from each one of them is the formatting that I've actually done. So these are the queries that I've written uh, for each one of them. So you can actually get uh, run these queries against the data model that we have, the ontology model, and then mention it the uh, results that I've actually shown you. So these are the each one of the queries that I actually have um, over the ontology model to get the uh, results that I've uh, shown you right there. So this is the final uh, application that uh, that can be model using to manage that. This is the base application where uh, I've taken into consideration two of the data sets and then uh, combined them with using an ontology and try to use data from them and try to integrate the DC data from them. So this can be done with any other data set. So this is a tutorial on uh, how to create a semantic web application.